Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can allow your website authors or editors to choose different templates like this for a specific custom post type. This request came in from a recent project where the client wanted the editors of the website to be able to choose a different layout option like this for their contact pages. Because each one of their offices, they wanted a little more control over how the layout is going to appear per office. In this demo, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can pull this off. The first one is right where my mouse is. This is just using Jet Engine and its meta fields to be able to control how this is going to get displayed. So in this example, you can see uh, it's template number two. So if I go from template number two, this is what the page would look like. The user can go ahead, click something like template one, hit update. And then if you go to the front end of that page, it's going to change the layout. So that's the first way I'm going to show you. And then over here on the right side, I'm going to show you more of the native WordPress way where the user can choose a template over here. And then inside of Elementor, you're going to go ahead and be able to assign a specific template for each one. So I'll show you some of the pros and cons for each way of doing this. And before you begin, just make sure that you have Elementor Pro and Jet Engine on your website. Now I'm going to go through all of the settings and how I was able to pull this off. So the first thing is underneath your jet engine, you're going to want to make sure you have this toggled on right here, dynamic visibility. I like using the jet engine uh, dynamic visibility because I don't have to install like another plugin and it has tons of features. So that's how we're going to be able to show which sections right here are going to be displayed depending on which template they choose. Now let me go ahead into the post type. So you can see right here, I have a post type called beers. I just have a handful of beers right here. And as you can see in this demo, when you click on edit, I have it where the user can upload an image, a description, the rating, which is the stars, whether it's on tap, and then these little templates. So let me show you how I have all that set up. So underneath Jet Engine on post types, I have this one right here called beers. So I'll just walk through all of the settings so you can match it up, you know, and fit this for your website. So you can see right here, I just called this one beers. I didn't change anything under labels. Underneath advanced, you can go ahead and see how I have all my settings. I believe I kept everything uh, pretty much by default. You may want to change this one. If this is enabled, this is going to have it where you can have categories instead of tags. And then right down here, I just have it where it just supports the title. So the user's not going to have options to do, um, you know, excerpts or thumbnails or anything like that. In this case, I wanted to be able to control everything through like Jet Engine. And then down here is where all of the uh, major things are going to be happening. And that's underneath your meta fields. So you can just go ahead, add your meta fields. I'll just quickly go through a few of them. So you can see this is where I have my, uh, my beer photos. So on this tutorial, uh, we're going to be mainly just focusing on the page templates. So underneath here, I gave this one called page template. I gave it where it's a radio button so they can only choose one. And then underneath manual input, I just have the three different templates. So if I open these up, you can see I just called it template one. And then I made sure that this is checked by default. So I'm making it required. So if they don't choose one, at least we know number one will always be selected. And then I just have two other options right here. So when the user goes to the page, that's what this is right here. Template one, template two, template three. And then, like I said, I'm making this required. And then you just go ahead, hit update. Now we're going to jump into how you build out this page right here on the front end. And then we're just going to be using um, the display conditions to be able to turn on and off depending on which template they chose. So it's pretty simple. Uh, let me go up to here. If you go underneath my templates for Elementor, I'll go to all. So I created this one just called default beer template. And you can see the instances is going to be beers. So any of the custom post types is going to get assigned this template. And now let me open this up and show you how I have everything set up. As you can see, I have uh, on the right side, I labeled everything. So all I have is each one of these templates. I have a unique header and then a unique body right down here. So it's pretty simple. It's just using the display logic and just turning on and off. So as you can see, let me highlight the very first one called template header. And you know, you could just do however you want. So the page, let me go back to the page. So it, depending on what template they choose, it's just turning on two of these sections. So of course, depending on your website, you could have this like a full page or just one call to action, whatever it may be. But in this case, the client, you know, they wanted a contact page. So in some cases they may want to have it where the office images are on the left or the right. So it gives them a little more flexibility. 
Now let me go back into here and show you how everything works. And so if you click on the very first one, it's best if you can to try to keep everything contained into like one container and then just turn on and off. Because if you have a whole bunch of different containers, you're going to have to do a lot more conditional logic, which isn't a big deal, but might be a little more on the setup. So once you're happy with how the layout's going to be, you just go underneath advanced and then underneath dynamic visibility, enable this. And I'm, what I'm going to do is show element if condition is met. And then I chose equal. And then let me open this up and show you what dynamic field I pulled in. So you go underneath here and you click dynamic tags and I'm using jet engine. So you just go to custom field and then right down here, these are all my different custom fields. We're just focusing on the one called beers and the one called page template. So you just want to choose that. And then you just put down the value. So whatever you have as the value. So in this case, I called it template one. So let me go back into the custom post type and show you the value. And it needs to match up because if it doesn't match up correctly, it's not gonna work. So if you go underneath here, so template one, this is the option value. So whatever you type in right here, it has to be equal to that in this field right here. And that's it. So really all you do at this point is you just go ahead and do it for all of them. So you can see right here, this container is for number two. So if I go underneath dynamic visibility, it's the same settings, but instead I'm, I'm calling the value template two. So if they choose template two, it's only going to show this plus this section right down here. So you just need to go ahead into your bodies and just do the same thing. So you can see right here, this body is the same. So template two. So this will work out good if it's a pretty simple page like this. Now you can tell if you start to have a page that has a lot of different containers and images and all this, it might start to run a bit slower on the back end if you're on a poor hosting or anything along those lines. So this could become more of a bloated way to do it, but it's a lot more organized because the next approach I'm gonna show you, you're gonna have to create three different page templates. So it's a little more work on that end, but in this case, if it's something pretty simple like this, you could just go ahead and just stack everything like this and then just display condition and then hit update. So again, if the user goes ahead and chooses, let's say template three on this one, hit update and hit refresh, you can see it changes to the template three. And then when you do save this out, um, like I said, underneath the display conditions on the template, it needs to be displayed to the post type called beers. So I just went in, in here and just chose beers and then all of them. So that's the first way you can pull this off just using like Jet Engine. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use more of the native taxonomy approach. And so this might be a better approach if you have a page that's a little bit bigger. So in this case, you can see right here, if the user is on the page, they can go on the right side right here, which is like beer template, and then they can choose a template. So they can choose like template three, hit update. And then if they go to the page, it's gonna switch from, I think I had number one, now it's on number three. So it's kind of a similar approach, but you just have to set up three different template files instead. But first, let me show you how you can add in that taxonomy. And it's pretty simple with Jet Engine. You just go underneath Jet Engine, click on taxonomies. I have this one called beer template. And you can just see the settings right here. So I called it beer template. The post type is called beer, so you have to already set that up. And then I kept uh, all this by default. So you can toggle on and off this button right here. Uh, but this is where you're going to go ahead. If it doesn't show up in the back end, you're going to want to make sure that you enable uh, the admin UI, I believe. And that's it. So once you do that, you will just go ahead, hit update. And then what you need to do is now go into the beer template uh, taxonomy. So I'm underneath beers, beer template. So this is the one we just created. And then you just go ahead and give it the three different names. So I'm calling it template one, template two, template three. So that's it. So however many templates you're going to have, you're going to need to put them in here first. And now we can jump into Elementor, create them, and then tag everything through Elementor and it will all work. Now what we need to do is go into your Elementor templates and then we're gonna create a single page template. So just go ahead and click add new, click single page, and then just give it a template name. So you can see right here, I already have three of them. So I'm gonna jump into a couple of them and show you how I have it set up. And if you already follow the first part of the tutorial, all I did was literally copy and paste everything in. So let me go ahead and change. If you go underneath the preview settings right here on the on the left or the cog, go underneath preview and you can just go to the beers, hit apply. This way it's going to pull in the right post type. 
So this is the Smithix one that's gonna pull in. And if you look right here, I have the same things I use in the first part of the tutorial. So as you can see, I just create like a header and a body right here. And in this case, you do not need to use dynamic visibility. So if you did copy this over, make sure that this is not enabled because you don't need it on right here. So now what you need to do is give it a unique display condition. So in this case, uh, this is what's really cool about Elementor with this display conditions is that you can tag it to a taxonomy. So that's how this is going to work. So in this case, I have it where it's inside of the beer template. So whatever you called your taxonomy, I called it beer template. It will show up right here underneath that post type. So it's underneath beers, beer template. And then you would just choose which one it is. That's why you have to put it in first. I already put in template one, two, and three. Then you can go ahead and just hit save and close and then just kind of repeat the process. So if I go into beer template two, you can see it's gonna be the same thing, but I just assigned the instance to beer template two. So let me open that up and show you how that looks. It's basically the same thing. I just have a different header and body right here, but underneath display conditions, you can see it's the same thing in beer template. And I call this template two. And then of course the third one is the same process, just create number three. So that's it. And once you have your three templates in this case, and they're assigned to each one of these custom taxonomies, then you're good to go. Everything else is just automated. So now when the user will go ahead and go to beers, choose one, they're gonna have this section right over here. And if for some reason they don't have it, uh, you can go ahead and click screen options at the top and choose beer template, but it should enable it by default. So as you can see, this is gonna give the user the ability to check multiple ones. So that's one um, con of using this approach is, I believe without doing some sort of custom coding, you can't make this a radio button. So I couldn't quite figure out how to do that part in this tutorial, but you just gotta be aware that the user will be able to select multiple, and then it's gonna decide which one. So let me choose all three of them and just see what happens. If you go to this one, you can see it loads up number uh, three, I believe that one was. So it's gonna just probably load up the last one on the list, but that is one drawback is the user is gonna have to be able to just check one and then hit update. So you can just give instructions to them and say, hey, just choose one and then you'll be good to go. And that's it for this tutorial on how I was able to pull off this functionality just using Jet Engine. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design, and thank you for watching.